For your switch part, you may have the setup like this. It has a native VLAN, and then you allow multiple tagged VLAN. But if you connect your computer to this part, how you can configure your computer to utilize the tagged VLAN is not as straightforward as you may think. If you use virtual machine, it will be much easier. For example, for this Prosmox, for this particular virtual machine, if I go to the hardware network device setting, I can easily specify a VLAN tag. That's it. That's how easy it is. And the setting is then outside of the guest operating system, so it's universal. It doesn't matter which guest OS you run, but if you run physical hardware or you simply want to configure the VLAN interface from your operating system, how you can do that? In this video, I'm going to use four operating systems as examples to talk about how to create VLAN tagged interface, Mac OS, Debian Linux, Windows Server 2022, and Windows 11 Professional. Each of them has its own way to create the interfaces. Let's start with the easiest, most user-friendly approach in Mac OS. In Mac OS, if we go to settings network, you can see by default, if your computer has a Ethernet part, it will show a default interface here. It's called Ethernet, and now it's connected, right? But you can see now it has this IP address. Based on my network setting, I can tell this is for the native VLAN, the default network. So now I want to connect to other VLANs using the same part. So let me go back, then see this three dots button. If you drop it down, you can see this option, manage virtual interfaces. Choose it, then you have the chance to add a new VLAN. Here I simply say VLAN 10 and give it a name, VLAN 10, and the parent interface. Because I only have one RJ45 port for this Mac Mini, this is the only parent interface I have. I accept it. Correct. Done. This is how easy it is to support a tagged VLAN in macOS. So let me proceed to add another one for VLAN 20. Okay, done. See, after a while, they are both active. So now I have three Ethernet connections for the default network, VLAN 1, VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. We can validate it, for example, for VLAN 10. See, the subnet is for VLAN 10, VLAN 20. Super easy, super user friendly, right? So then let me move on to Linux. For Debian Linux, if you want to introduce permanent VLAN interfaces, you can edit this configuration file under etc network interfaces file. For each VLAN, you can add a new interface. They are based on the same physical link. But in this video, let me show you another way. You can do it during runtime on the fly. So first, let me show the current IP address and interface. I can see the interface name is called ENS18. And I can tell from the IP address is for default network, the untagged VLAN. So then let me create a new link for VLAN 10. So what I'm saying is I want to use IP link command, add a new link based on the existing physical link, ENS18. For the new link, I want to give it this name. This is the naming convention if it's for a VLAN. So it's original interface appended with dot. Oh, here I need to correct it. So the name is dot 10, indicating it's for VLAN 10. Then the type is VLAN, and the VLAN ID is 10, right? So this is the command. I can create a new link for VLAN 10 on the fly. Okay, done. So now we have a new link, but the link doesn't have a IP address yet. So let me simply assign it a static IP address. To do that, I run sudo IP address, add, a new .10.88 IP address for this device, ENS18.10, which we just created. Okay, successful. Now we have a new link. It has an IP address, but we still cannot use it because we haven't brought it up yet. So we can simply bring it up. IP link command, set the new link up. That's it. Okay, now we are done. If I show the current IP address situation, 
See, we have a new interface and it's up and it has a IP address and very quick, let me add another VLAN interface in Linux for VLAN 20. Okay, done. Just to validate the two interfaces we just created, let me ping the left side Mac OS. First, get the current IP addresses. Then let me use the VLAN 10 IP address to ping the macOS VLAN 10. From the left side, I can get the macOS VLAN 10 IP address. It's dot .93. Then in Linux, let me specify I. Then use the Linux VLAN 10 IP address to ping the macOS VLAN 10 IP address. Yeah, it's successful. And similarly, get the VLAN 20 IP address from macOS. And then in Linux, ping it using the VLAN 20 IP address. Okay, also successful. Which means in both macOS and Linux, the interfaces we created for VLAN 10 and VLAN 20, they all work. We are done with the Linux. Even though you need to use some commands to do that, but it's very simple as well. Now move on to the headache, which is Windows. For Windows Server, the VLAN interface configuration has much better situation than the Windows 11 Pro because the server comes with VLAN interface support out of box. You don't need any extra third-party vendors drivers support. For example, in this Windows 2022, if I go to Server Manager for local server, you can see this one, NIC Teaming. By default, it's disabled. If we click on the link, here we can create a new team. Then we simply give it a name. We choose the only existing physical link, the Ethernet adapter. We say OK. You can see this new team is created. Now we can add team interfaces. So see the existing one, which was added, is for default VLAN. If we check the property, you can see there's no VLAN ID specified. At this time, if we try to see the current IP address, you can see I only have one API address because there's only one interface which is connected to the default network, right? So it's for an untagged VLAN for VLAN 1. Now I'm ready to add new interfaces for other VLAN. I can click on the newly created team and then in the right side for interfaces, if I drop it down, see, I have the option to add new interface. The only thing I need to specify is the VLAN tag. So here first, let me say ten. See, a new interface is created, and add another one, twenty. That's it. Also very simple, even though not very straightforward, because there's a additional layer. It's called a team. But anyway, everything is done in the same UI. Very simple, right? Let's briefly validate whether the two interfaces work. Check the IP address first. Okay, we have new IP addresses. Let me take the VLAN 10 IP address to ping macOS. Here I specify dash s to indicate which interface to use. Then ping macOS, ping VLAN 10 as well. Okay, run it. It work. Then try VLAN 20. Yep, also work. When it comes to Windows, the non-server version, the situation is much more complicated because the system doesn't come with VLAN interface support out of box. Different vendors may have their own way to support VLAN, so you need to use different tools from different companies. For example, for Intel, it provides some drivers and tools to support VLAN. However, for Windows 11, Intel stopped the support for the tool which worked in Windows 10. If you use Intel network interface card for Windows 11, you may be confused how you can support VLAN, right? In fact, the situation is not as bad. The reason is Windows 11 comes with Hyper-V support. We can use that to add VLAN interfaces. Let me show you how. By the way, for this particular example, Windows 11 machine, it does have a Intel network interface card. First, I need to make sure I have Hyper-V installed. So see the turn Windows feature on or off application. I can see Hyper-V is installed, right? I'm ready. 
Let me launch the PowerShell run as administrator. Because I need to set up VM switch, I need to first get the existing physical interface name. The way to get it is get net adapter. I can see the interface name is simply called Ethernet. Then I run the new VM switch command, give the new switch a name. I specify the network adapter name as the one we just got. Then I say allow management OS true. Okay, so the switch was created successfully. Then I need to add new VLAN interfaces. So the way to create new VLAN interfaces is to use command add VM network adapter. Here I say management OS. This is important because here I'm saying I don't want to specify a virtual machine. I simply want to add the interface to the management OS level. That's how we can use it from the operating system level. Even though we are not using hypervisor, we can still use the interface. Then I need to give the VLAN interface a name. For this particular example, I'm specifying VLAN 20. Then I need to give the switch name, which I just created. I say pass through. Then here I set additional value for VLAN. I say it's a access part. So for a given switch part, it can be either access part or trunk part, right? So here I say it's a access part and then the VLAN ID is 20. In this way, the system will give the packet for this interface a VLAN tag, which is 20, right? Okay, done. Then run similar command, but for VLAN 10. Okay, done. So now if I run the get adapter command again, see, we see three new adapters. This one, the V Ethernet test switch is for the untagged packet, the default network. Then this one, VLAN 10 is the one we just created and the VLAN 20 as well. Now we can check whether we already got correct IP address for the three new interfaces. Let me run IP config. Okay, see for this untagged interface, it has default network IP address. For the VLAN 20, it has a VLAN 20 address. For VLAN 10, it has a VLAN 10 IP address, right? Just to validate, for example, for VLAN 20, let me ping the macOS VLAN 20 IP address. Here for this Windows machine, the IP address is 20.16, right? Then let me say ping, specify source interface or source IP address. Then use the IP address for VLAN 20 for this Windows machine. Ping the macOS VLAN 20 IP address. Oh, I used the wrong IP address. Let me correct it. Okay, it's successful. By the way, in Windows 11, if you mess up the configuration, you simply want to start from scratch or reset to original situation. You simply run the Windows feature application again, uncheck the Hyper-V, restart, then you are back to original situation. Just for your information, you can do that in a very quick way. Okay, this ends the video. We covered four example operating system. In all of them, the processes are not very complicated, but the problem is depending on the operating system or even depending on the version of the operating system, the way to set up VLAN interfaces may be different. Okay, thanks for watching.